Shall we give the Lord a big hand of praise? God is opening the heavens this morning. Please lift up your two hands and give him thanks again for the privilege to be in his presence. Impossible doors will be open to you today. When he opens, no man can shut, and when he shuts, no man can open. Lift up your two hands and worship his majesty. Glorify him. Thank him because he's brought you to bless you, and you are sure to be blessed in this service today beyond your widest imagination. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. Would you ask the Lord to speak to me today? When the word of Joseph came, everything turned around in his favor. Lord, send me my own word today. The sent word will always deliver. The sent word will always deliver. Send me my own word today. Let your word speak to me directly today. Let your word speak to me directly today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, Lord, I pray that each one lives here today knowing what to do. To keep doors of favor open to their lives. Yeah. 
that no one will suffer the plague of closed doors again. Yeah. That you that has continued to open doors of favor to this ministry for the last 41 years, you will visit your people today. Yeah. Your life shall not know a dry season anymore. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not once have we gathered in our leadership in this church saying, what do we do now? Now, what's happening? How do we come out of this? The remaining days of your life, you never know what it means to be stranded again. I have never suffered a sleepless night on this ministry since Jesus gave me this privilege call. Your sleepless nights are finally over. The God of open doors will show up in your life. Sleepless nights over your children. No more. Yeah. No more sleepless nights over your marriage. Yeah. No more sleepless nights over your health. Yeah. No more sleepless nights over your spouse. Yeah. No more sleepless nights over your business and career. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now let me tell you what the Lord told me. He said, keep showering my blessing on them. Those who believe it, we eat the fruits thereof. Just keep showering my blessings on them. Those who care to believe it among the people, we eat the fruits thereof. So I said, that's what he said last year. You didn't believe it last year, so it didn't happen. You don't believe it this year, it won't also happen. I can only proclaim it. I can't believe it for you. Even when the Almighty speaks, you don't believe it won't happen. May your faith come alive this month. Yeah. And may every proclaimed blessing find expression in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The blessing of priesthood is what provokes God's confirmation. I pray that we will experience diverse confirmation of prophetic blessings this year. Yeah. Lord, once again, speak to every one of us afresh in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please be seated. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. Please note that no prophecy of scriptures of from an anointed prophet will ever see the light of day without your faith. My God. An angel sent from God came and declared the word of God. And the word said, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. It came direct from God. Sir. That doesn't matter. Believe the Lord your God shall be established. His word shall be confirmed in your life. That's what it means. Believe also his prophets and shall prosper by what the prophets have when they are sent by God. No prophecy of scriptures or of an anointed prophet will ever see the light of day without the active faith of the recipient. That makes each of us responsible for the events of our lives. Because this whole thing is called the most sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It means you never see any word of scriptures come to pass in your life and in my life without our faith being at work. That makes faith a spiritual asset of inestimable value. 
Everything is faith determined in the kingdom. Everything. Everything is determined by faith in the kingdom. Faith is the substance of our redemption. Faith is what substantiates the value of redemption in the life of a believer. If you can believe, all things are possible to end up believing. I mean, nothing is possible without your faith. Mark 9, verse 23. Is to everyone according to his faith. So it's your faith and my faith that determines the happiness in our life. Matthew 9, 29. Be it unto thee according to your faith. Righteousness delivers by faith. The righteousness which is by faith. Romans 10, 6. We overcome by faith. 1 John 5, 4. We are healed by faith. Do you believe that I, the Son of Man, am able to do it? You believe before your healing can be delivered. They say, yeah, Lord, okay, according to your faith. You can get it. This is so crucial. Prayers are answered by faith. Whatever thing you shall ask in prayers, Believing, he shall receive them. Matthew 21, verse 22. Let him ask in faith, or let no other man think he shall receive anything from God. James 1, 6 and 7. This is the reason why we must jealously guard and continue to build our faith. So that our redemption can be meaningful, valuable, and impactful. You don't build your faith to be enslaved by the faith of others or by the crookedness of others. Anybody can see any vision for you, you'll be running like a donkey. God forbid. God's more word of prophecy is right here. They just threaten you and you start dangling up and down. This is settled in heaven forever. I don't know where the other person is coming from. You are not coming from the world. You are not worthy of attention. I've prayed for you, Jesus said, that thy faith faileth not. When your faith fails, nothing works. Luke 22 and verse 31. Simon, Satan desires to have you. He wants to see you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that thy faith faileth not. When faith fails like heart failure, when the heart fails, life ceases. When faith fails, redemption loses total value. Total value. No one's faith here shall fail anymore. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? Amen. But well, it's very important for us to know that there are many storms that little faith cannot handle. Why are you so fearful, O oh ye of little faith? Little faith. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 17. O oh ye of little faith. There are many prophecies that weak faith can never see fulfilled. And being not weak, in faith, he consider not his own body which is not as good as dead. Romans 4 17 to 20. Neither the, the deadness of Sarah's womb against hope he believed in hope <laughs> that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken. And he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So you can see prophecies fulfilled with weak faith. It takes strong faith. Calling those things that be not as though they were strong faith. And you have to build strength by the word into your faith. You have to build strength by the word into your faith. Arise and eat. But the journey is long for thee. And he went in the strength of that man 40 days and 40 nights into Horeb, the month of God. 
We build strength into our spirit man by the word. My friend, it, it, weak faith can come and dear faith tabernacle by that matching order one year. No, no, not uh, Jekko Jekko faith, not chocolate faith. It has to be rooted, grounded faith in the God that cannot fail. It's not, uh, I believe, I confess, no. <laughs> Amen. 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 So there are many things God has in store for you that your weak faith can't handle. And you don't build strength in the course of the march. You build strength into your system before a march. You don't start exercising when you are already in the ring for a contest. You have been doing that behind the scene. Please build your faith. God's great. He said, I have many things to do, but you can't handle them now. I have many great things in store for you, but you can't pick them. You can't pick them. Your capacity can handle them. You can't receive them. He said, not all men can receive these things. There are things God has in store for you and me that is waiting for us to build capacity to receive. Build it. Life has no return match. Build it. Don't wish it. Build it. You don't wish muscular development. You build it. You build it. There are many sitting out here today who will be a blessing to nations. Yeah. But you have to build your faith capacity to match heaven's agenda. Don't assume it. Build it. Though we have never seen it in our lives, but he said he will build this thing in one year. Carry on Jesus. No one can hinder you. We came in stupidly following day without any break or doubt in the course of the season. My God. It was difficult for anybody to approach me for a possible change of date because I got the date from God. Amen. Amen. 18 September 99 came from the mouth of God. Now, I, I have to choose between you and God. So to save your life, I, I built an edge. I wasn't accessible. So that you won't think that, okay, I even advise. You don't advise for what? God said. Then you advise what? You, you need strong faith to secure your glorious agenda in God's hands. You need it. You are doing so well on your streets. What if? Heaven has ordained that to impart continent and they start roaming around in the same place. We are going forward. Amen. Now, more than conquerors are ordained to emerge here this year. Amen. Who shall remain so for life? Amen. So, diligently hearken to what will birth it and then commit to it genuinely as an individual. And watch how God will bring his work to pass in your life without sweat. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. Now, very quickly, prophecies are the unveiling of God's plan and purpose for his, a people, uh, for us as a people, as an individual. It has found in this world or has spoken by his prophets. He just unveils this plan. This is my plan. If you're interested, line up. If you're interested, believe it. And prove that to do by obeying what he says to be done. Show me your faith without lining up with what he says to be done. And I'll show you my faith by my works. Line up. Line up. Stop waiting. It can be wasteful. Line up what it says to be done. And you have committed its integrity to perform. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. How powerful are prophecies? One, prophecies carry inbuilt 
capacity for fulfillment, for fulfillment. There is inbuilt power within a prophetic word for delivery. Inbuilt power. Because prophecies are sworn verdict. God swears by his own integrity. By myself, if I sworn, as I've thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I purpose, so shall it stand. So there is inbuilt power embedded in every prophecy for fulfillment. All it takes is your faith, your active faith in receiving and believing the reality of those words. Because our God specializes in calling those things that be not as though they were. He caused them into pain. So shall my word be which is comfort out of my mouth, shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that for which I sent it. I mean, my word will not return to me void. It has imbued capacity for delivery. Imbued capacity for delivery. Whatever God declares is a done deal. It's your faith that brings into reality. Number two, our powerful our prophecies. God speaks according to his capacity, not our limitations. He's almighty. Is there anything too hard for him? He speaks according to what only he can do. Only he can make a virgin bring forth a son. And he did. Only him can keep the sun and the moon in one spot for a whole day. And he did. Only him can divide the Red Sea. And he did. God speaks according to his own capacity to deliver. That is, this is me saying this and nothing is too hard for me if you can believe it. So every word from concerning you to concerning the year shall find open manifestations. Yeah. As your faith catches up with every statement thereof. Can I hear your amen? This time tomorrow shall be plenty of food on the seas of Samaria. And that man said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, can this thing be? The prophet reacted. You will see with your eyes, but your mouth will not touch it. He's comparing God with man. Whatever God speaks, he creates. He's not looking for raw material to work with. He says it, he creates it. Okay, which raw material produced light? God created it. Which raw material produced plants? God created it. Which raw material created animals? God said, and it was created. So, God and man are not in the same plane. Whatever he says, he creates. He's not looking for, he doesn't have a factory. God has no factory. A woman came to a crusade in Bauchi many years ago. She came all the way from Jaws and then went back home in the morning uh, to her family. And he told the husband, I'm pregnant. Ah? The husband said, just yesterday and now. And she was. She believed the prophetic word and declared it on getting home and she became pregnant. Can I hear your amen? Whatever God says, God creates. Somebody's living here with a, an outstanding testimony this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, number three, God speaks according to his integrity and not our unpredictability. He speaks according to his own integrity. Amen. And it's God that cannot lie. That means there's no capacity to lie. Just like a man has no capacity to be a child, I mean, to be pregnant. He may be pregnant with food, but he can't be pregnant with a child. God cannot lie. Just like a man cannot carry a baby in a womb. A man has no womb, so there's no way to even carry the baby. It's the same way God cannot lie. It's not a man that should lie, not a son of man that should, should. So he speaks according to his integrity. He's ever reliable ever dependable, never failing integrity. 
never fail in integrity. It's our faith faith that makes it look like God failed. Why is not everybody having testimony? Not everybody believes. <laughs> Why is not everybody saved? Not everyone believes that he had the gospel. Why is my sister I think not working for everybody? Not everybody is doing it. Everybody is saying it, but how many people are doing it? Amen. I mean, God is no respecter of persons, sir. God is no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he will do for another. If they stand on the same platform. God is no respecter of persons. The Lord says, say, tell them. Some are questioning, where is my sister? I think not working. You are not working it. Mm. Sir, you are not working it. Mm. There's no one that genuinely works here that doesn't work. Mm. The truth always works. The truth always works. There are people here in this church now, that's their life wire. Matthew 63 is their life wire. They are just moving on and moving on and moving on. No setback, no step backward. They are just moving on and moving on. <laughs> hey Amen. You don't work it, it won't work. He said, work out your own salvation. Every provision of scripture requires that you work your portion out. Work it out. Work your portion out. What it says to do, do it. I mean, you are not praying. You know you are not praying. No, nobody needs to prophesy to you that you are not praying. You should know. No, that does say the Lord, the, uh, James, you are not praying. No. You know? You say, James, are you praying? And you say, I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. No. <laughs> you should know. Amen. <laughs> if you invited anybody to church today, you should know. Yes. If you pray for anyone to be saved, the only this week, you should know. Yes. Oh, that's it. I say, I will do other things to you. It's just not talking to you. It's talking to those who are doing it. Seek you for the kingdom of God. And I will add all these things to those who are doing it. Yes, Not to those who had it. And I'm here by grace. I've been eating Matthew 33 since 1976. Yes, I didn't know you that time, so it wasn't because of you I saw it. I sold out to it the year I saw it. Hallelujah. I've never regretted I did. In the name of Jesus, your faith will no longer fail. He speaks according to his integrity by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Impossible. We have a strong consolation. We have fled for refuge and lay hold on life everlasting. God will decorate you this year. All your mockers will join to worship your God. Yeah. It shall be a year of dramatic change of story. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, how faith facilitates fulfillment of prophecy? How does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecy? Now, three things happen when we receive and believe the prophetic word. Please take note of this. Three things happen when we receive and um, believe the prophetic word. Number one, the Holy Ghost goes into operation for delivery. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 to 35. Concerning that prophetic word that came to Mary, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a, man, a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now, it shall be great, it shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. What the prophetic word, verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this thing be, since I know not a man, and he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, so that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So the Holy Ghost goes into operation every time we truly receive and believe a prophetic word to engender its delivery. 
it goes into operation. What do you see? I saw seven gold, golden candlesticks and uh, with seven bowls and all that stuff, all of gold. He said, not by power, not by my, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So it's our faith that provokes the operation of the Holy Ghost that works out the delivery of any prophetic word. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Not by power, nor by might. You can't work out fulfillment of prophecy. It's beyond you, it's beyond me. Amen. It's by the hand of God that we see it happen. Amen. Amen. You can't organize it. When you believe it, the Holy Ghost goes into operation to actualize it. Number two, when we truly receive and believe a prophetic word, angels of God go into action. Angels of God do what? Into action. They go into action. Angels of God go into action because they excel in strength and they hearken to the voice of his word. Psalm 103 verse 20. Every word from God receives angelic attention for delivery. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when we truly receive and believe the word, the angels of God responsible for that transaction go into action. Amen. 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 So that takes you beyond me and beyond you. That's what happens when faith comes alive. And then, of course, number three, when we receive and believe the prophetic word, God stretches out his hand to perform. Whatever God speaks with his mouth, only his hand has the power to make it happen. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 15. Blessed be the Lord God of my father which spoke with his mouth to David, my father, and that with his hand fulfilled it. Amen. How do we secure the hand of God who had believed our report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Isaiah 53 verse 1. So faith provokes the stretching forth of God's hand that performs his word in our lives. Amen. There is no way anybody can substitute an angel when it comes to spiritual transactions. That's their job. They ascend and descend the ladder of heaven to ensure that uh, things are in shape according to your faith. So this thing delivers according to our faith as individuals. I know that I know that an army of giants will rise in this place this year. Amen. By engaging their faith in God and the prophetic word for the year by engaging their faith in God who cannot lie and in the prophetic word concerning us as a people this year. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. This is vital. This is very important. And I want to believe that uh, no one will toy with it. No one will toy with it. No one will toy with it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In addition, we must give ourselves wholly to the demands of every prophetic word if they must come to pass in our lives. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's the way to see whatever he says come to pass. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. He's only able to see what he says come to pass. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And you see what he says come to pass. Just do it. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 and 15. Meditate upon these things and go to verse 14. Neglect not the gift that I sent thee which was given thee by a prophecy with the laying of hands of the presbytery. Now, he said in verse 15, meditate upon these things and give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Just give yourself wholly to the demands of a prophetic word. Give yourself wholly to it. Give yourself wholly to it. I, my, I'm going to dedicate this place September 18, 1999 
we came here September 18, 1998 to start measuring the foundation, sir. It's not the following day, my God. Give yourself fully to them. I became general manager of the construction. I was holding meetings. We, hold, we were holding meetings 2 a.m. Sunday morning, sir, and I was still preaching. My God, 3 a.m. Just marking the hours. Marking the hours and partnering with Jesus. May the Lord bless the soul of all those men Amen. who partner with Jesus in the building of this place. Amen. They walked like walk. They walked. They walked. Their generation will not miss their blessings. The blessings we speak through all their generations. Amen. None of them will miss their steps. Amen. Each one of them will make heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But you give yourself who lay to them. Who lay? Who lay to them? You don't do what he says, what he says will never come to pass. You do what he says to see what he says come to pass. Amen. You won't do what he says, forget it. Can I tell you this? No one will ever taste financial fortune in the kingdom. They are not listening. <laughs> no one will ever, without lining up with what he says, makes it happen. Be a committed kingdom promoter from the place where you are. God is not a taskmaster, sir. From one naira position, you're taking strong position in obeying God. The tight of Ten naira is one naira. What's your problem? He won't give you ten naira as to be made tight of two naira. No. No. Uh, when I say so, I, I say it as God leads me now. My friend, instead of dropping ten naira in a service, and you're going to be in two services, divide it to two. Put five naira in the first service, put five naira in the second service. God knows your level, don't post. But to now look and it's not fear on yourself. It's not on anybody else, on yourself. Do you know my tithe was part of what we counted in Kaduna when our income was 18,000? 18, 18, but it never failed once. It never failed once. I was given tithe 1,000 a week. How many years ago? But when you just sit down and be watching, yeah, no, God will open the window. He won't open nothing. There's what you must do, what I must do to keep the heaven open. Yes, but this year, whatever door you have shot against yourself, oh, because people shut the doors against them, they don't know. You say, Jesus, he is. I don't believe that. You shut the door of healing to yourself. He died on the cross. He took away your, your pain. I say, I'm sick. He says, don't say again. <laughs> now, you are shutting the door against yourself unknowingly. Yes, sir. Don't say things are bad. Say things are bad. Let me tell you the truth. Things are bad. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And since you want to obey what is being said, you are just destroying the work of your hand by yourself. We don't know. Him. Nobody here will fall a victim. Yeah. He said, because my house is lying down in ruins and you are all running to your house. You know how many people can build a right church in this church? You know, 14 million or whatever. You know how many can build it? But you know how many will never build it? If they have 14 billion, they won't build one. It's true. No. If they have one 14 billion, they won't build one. Their heart is somewhere else. Yes. They are worshipping the coins. <laughs> my God. Amen. Amen. It took me time to become a thousand years. I didn't know when I became a millionaire. I became a billionaire without knowing. Wow. By simply obeying God. All about you. I'm so blessed that devil is so disturbed. Uh, you know that? Yes. All the demons are so disturbed. How can a man be blessed like this? <laughs> <laughs> a man is not, 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 not collecting money around. He's not prophesying for money. No. Amen. This is the man. How can the ministry be so blessed? Ask what the ministry is doing. Ask what you are doing. 
Nothing happens by chance. Mm. Yes, they all happen by choice. Yes, May you keep choosing a right in your life. Yes. Now, in this highly prophetic family, no prophetic world will fall to the ground in your life anymore. Yes. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yes. Well, that's the good news. Hallelujah. Now, keep speaking faith-filled words to see prophetic words come to pass in your life. You say to this mountain, be thou removed. You are not talking problems. You are speaking the word as spoken by the Lord. What helped Abraham is that it was tied to that which was spoken. Be tied to it. What is happening around you notwithstanding, be tied to what God said. Be tied to what he said in his word. Be tied to what he sent his prophets, and you can locate that in the word. Be tied to it. And speak like that. Whatever you believe, you freely speak. What you can't freely speak, you don't truly believe. We have believed, therefore we have spoken. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Anything you truly believe, you freely speak. Anything a, a believer truly believes, he freely speaks. Freely speaks. People ask me in those days, how is today? The, the greatest day of my life. I mean, great. Awesome. <laughs> Early morning, we have not done anything. But great, my friend. The day is great. The day is still very young, but the day is great. What to say today is what to find tomorrow. Life and death and the power of the tongue. How is everything? Where, 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 where? <laughs> That's not life. That's not life. That's not life. How are you doing, Daddy? Great. Full stop. Amen. You guys say, what about what is happening in town? There's nothing happening in town. Amen. Great things are happening here, my friend. Great things always happen in the kingdom. What's happening in town is irrelevant. Great things are always happening in the kingdom. And great things won't cease happening in your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? You have me see. Coronavirus can enter here. Has he entered now? You take your authority by the authority of faith. Amen. Wonder where to where to do what? How? Temperature is too high. If you are waiting for it to come in here, you wait for eternity. <laughs> it can't. Darkness can't come into where light is. <laughs> you can ask any darkness if you can try it. Come to where light is, you stop being darkness forever. Thank you, Jesus. In the same vein, evil will never find its way to your household. Thank you, Jesus. Today is a covenant day of open doors. God's presence is the master key to a world of open doors. Say with me, God's presence is the master key to a world of open doors. Lift up your heads, ye gates, and be ye lifted over your everlasting doors. That the King of glory may come in. King of glory. No door can be shut against the King of glory. So, when you carry his presence, in truth and in deed, you carry his presence. <laughs> and two things make that happen. Whatever I, I mean, they say, you, I, because I, he said that same is with me. My father has only let me know because I do always the things that please him. If you keep striving to please him, you enjoy his presence naturally. And if you are a man of thanksgiving, praise, joy, and rejoicing, you are entitled to his presence. Amen. These things are there. You walk with this, you carry his presence. And let me see what door the enemy can shut against you. That's the master key. An angel took Peter out, and then the Bible says the first gate opened on his own accord. The iron gate opened on his own accord. I mean, that one just came from God. Yes, 
yes. out of God himself. Mm. God takes you by, by the hand, and then you see the man say, wait. Can any man say, wait? No. <laughs> when God is holding your hand, he says, tell them the Almighty is here. Ah, he will prostrate. He will crawl from his room. Almighty God, powerful God. No door is ever shut with a man that carries his presence. Yes. Therefore, whatever puts God's presence away from you, I decree an end to it today. Whatever robs you of his presence, I decree an end of it today. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, God's presence gave us this land. I met no person as an individual. I spoke no, to no king or village leader. No. They were more than willing to give. He said he gave them the land, yes. not of their own strength. Yes. God's presence opens impossible doors. Amen. Now, from today, no door of favor shall be shut against you anymore. Amen. The cheapest thing you can do is to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord of His and again and again I say what? Rejoice. Rejoice evermore. You can't carry his presence without joy. You enter into his gate with thanksgiving, into his court with praise. You're thankful to him and bless his name, and then he also to his presence. And then you carry that presence all along your life. It makes all the difference. If you don't know the secret behind this ministry, is divine presence. Divine presence that dwells visibly here. All the devils in hell can see it, sir. The, the majestic presence of the Almighty in the midst of his people. And that's available to everyone. You never lack his presence anymore. In the name of Jesus. Now, what must we do to continue to enjoy open doors in this journey of life? Now, be born again and abide so. It's one thing to be born again, it's another thing to remain so. There are two different things. Unbelief will disconnect anybody from the vine. And when a branch is cut off from the trunk, it's dead. It's a matter of time. Abide, he said, abide in me and let my word abide in you. You know, just stay on. You are born again, stay born again. Don't let the you know, throw you aboard. Stay on. It may be slow, but it's sure. But it's better to be slow and sure than to be fast and fall. Stay on. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto thee. We need that word abide. That's what gives color to Christianity. So my end there today, they disappear tomorrow, they come there next tomorrow. At the time you come ungraftable, ungraftable, you can't be grafted anymore. Abide there. Why? The wind blows at least you can't you can't you can't tell where it's coming from, where it's going. So it's everyone that's born of the spirit. Every child of God is a sign to the world. The door can be shut when you remain a sign indeed. Without cutting corners looking for who can help God to deliver. No, no, no. It's not done. Can I tell you this? And I want to well, you should believe it. I think you should. That we have not had to resort to any man under heaven for any aid in this ministry since inception. God is more than enough for his agenda for your life and my life. When you now start crunching under particular, under unbelievers, where are you coming from? Yes, from somewhere. You can't say you're coming from church. Mm -hmm. They say, why can't your God help you? They say, Ranga <laughs> Dede. My God. I don't know how you feel. To so see a child of a president begging for food at Sango Junction. No. 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 He doesn't know the son of who he is. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. 
I have never begged on God's behalf in my life that please let God have his way. Stay now, he will cross you. Stay on his, stay, stay on his way. They say, Etelah is coming, it doesn't matter. Etelah is coming, it doesn't matter. You know whether it matters or not. <laughs> it will be too late to know it matters. You are too precious in the sight of God yes, to sell yourself so cheap for what to eat. My God. I mean, giving offering towards, uh, what did they call it? Uh, ark is natural. God has been an ark, isn't he? Yes. But see how, re how relaxed you are. To show how more than enough God is. Blessing. My God. So, you are your problem. You are your major problem, sir. A double man depends on stable in all his ways. Let me not think shall receive anything from God. God, I'm staying with you. Hallelujah. You have never been known to fail. And I stay here forever. Amen. You just settle with God. He settles you. Yes. My God. You are going to see wonders. Oh. Amen. Nobody can be more than a conqueror by the hand of man. My God. Nobody on this earth can be more than a conqueror by the hand of man. It is the hand of God. So I said, promise. I said, whatever you can't give me, may I never have it. Mm. Whatever you can't give me, I don't want it. Mm. Whatever you can't do for me, let it remain undone. Mm. That's why he's doing all the things he's doing. Yes. 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 Amen. <laughs> In the heat of high tension faith, when we were building this place, there was nobody called to a meeting. There was nobody called to a meeting. We need 40 million tomorrow, go ahead. Hallelujah. And 40 million will come. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. Your God is more than enough. All this Jacob, Jacob faith is who you know that matters. It's nonsense. Complete nonsense. It's anti faith. It's anti covenant. Amen. He said, The forces of the Gentiles shall be converted to you. By divine election, election of grace, not by expertise or anything, is one of the centers of faith fire on the earth today. Yes, sir. With proof, it cannot be denied. So catch the fire, my friend. Amen. Amen. Go, I'm going around nowhere. I've come to my final bus stop. I know you. Yes. And I know what to do. Glory to God. Some don't like me saying that, but I like it myself. Amen. That my God, who is also your God, is more than enough. For anybody to make you, to make you, to cast a passion on your God that you're still hanging around him. How is that your church now? Uh, why are these things like this for you? Eh? Did you talk to your pastor? Eh? I don't believe he's asking you that question, my God. No, 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 no. Even a believer has no right to ask you that question. I've never asked anybody to cast a passion on my God in my presence. When I blow up, you will fry out. No, I'm talking about my father. I don't know about your father. I'm talking about my father. Praise God. Can I tell you this? God can give you a job today where you never knew. Somebody is carrying a baby from this service now. Because that closed womb is now open. Somebody's business is taking a new turn right now. Because the devil behind your frustration in business is already dealt with. Thank you, Jesus. We have never called on any government. Come and help us. You can ask them. Something is breaking forth in your life. Yeah. Now, many employers of labor that have not even imagined it now will rise this year. Yeah. Well, Stop begging. God will start decorating. Yeah. 
when you stop preaching under agents of the devil, God will start decorating your life. Thank you, Jesus. There are many entrepreneurs in this church, many big time businessmen that have not touched anything that defies. So, wait, what are you looking for? It's your time. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Yeah. You want to continue to enjoy open doors? Continue to walk in the fear of God. You can't be ashamed of one who wants to favor you. When you are ashamed of him, you have lost out of his favor. Be another Joseph who will not toy with what tongue, turns God off and doors will keep opening to you. He was there in the house of Potiphar as a slave. He had favor. He got his way into the prison by satanic manipulations, he thought. He had favor. And they interpreted the dream instead of just telling him to go free. They now made him Lord, made him Senator, made, I mean everything in one day. The fear of God keeps the door open. He said, I fear God. That was the only testimony, but I fear God. The fear of God will keep doors of favor open to you all through life. The fear of God. Now, how will God see this? I won't do it. I won't. I want it to put God off. I want. I want. I want. When you won't cut corner, I will stand up for you. I want. I want. I want. I want. I see a new generation of Daniels rising. People won't bow to any graven image, no matter it's marketing it. There shall be amazing testimonies Amen. from this instruction today Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the good news is today marks the beginning of open doors that will never be shut again. Amen. Just line up with this word. Let's quickly conclude. Remain in love with God, and the doors of favor will remain open to you. Remain what? In love with God. God is love. Whosoever dwells in love, dwells in God and God in him. And can any door be shut against God? Remain in love with God, and doors will remain, doors of favor will remain open to you all through life. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. And because no door can be shut against, door, against God, as you remain in love with God, doors of favor remain open to you all the days of your life. Amen. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things, no door is shut, all things. Therefore, I decree doors of miracle marriage open to you. Doors of business and career breakthroughs open to you. I decree doors of family peace and harmony open to you. I decree doors of divine health and vitality open to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, remain committed. Be committed to following God's leading in your life because you don't suffer dry season following God's leadings. And they tasted not when he led them through the desert. He caused the waters to come forth out of the rock for them. He cleaved the rocks also, and the waters gushed out. Just throw yourself loose in the hand of God. Lead me wherever you will, and I will follow. Lead me, Lord Jesus, and I will follow. Lead me, Lord Jesus, and I will follow. Doors keep opening as we keep following his leading. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So enemies don't need to die. No. They need to suffer the pain of seeing what they say will not happen, happen. Yes. They need to suffer the pangs of seeing what they say will never happen, happen. Yes. Can I hear your amen? amen. Yes. Psalm 23, verse 1 and 2 and verse 5. And then it said in verse 6, surely goodness and message I keep following me as I keep following the Lord. So no joy is short. I mean, you are following the Lord. Stand up, please. This is the law here. And you are following him. And door cannot be shot against him. Can door be shot against you? If you are in a presidential convoy, can any uh, police stop you? No. No. Please say that. <laughs> so following is leading, keep the doors open. Now, where does saluting the president? I did not salute, salute you to. They can't say it's not where I'm saluting you. <laughs> That's the dignity of following the Lord. You know, we follow the Lord into this place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every devil knows we follow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. All the witches were saluting. Well, yes, they were falling to the ground physically. Hmm. My God. Hmm. You follow God. Anything that bows to God, that salutes God, we salute you. Amen. Anything. Yes, anything. And everything. Thank it's your turn. Yes. So always ask the Lord, what are you saying? Always ask. I bet you know. Amen. Always ask the Lord. What are you saying? That's the question I asked when we got here. Jesus, what are you saying? He said, this is the place. Okay? Always ask the Lord. Not every open door is God's door. Many are traps in disguise. Ask the Lord. Some fake doors will open before the real one comes. Ask the Lord. You won't fall into a dungeon. Amen. Finally, enter into covenant to make serving God your new way of life. Yes, yeah. And you will enjoy rest round about. No affliction or plague of closed doors. Because you have entered a covenant to make serving God your new way of life. At your level. Sanctuary keeping, hospitality, uh, traffic, just keep serving. Cell minister, assistant, keep serving. So winning, I mean, uh, praying, keep serving. When serving God becomes a way of life, doors open to you on their own accord. Amen. That's my little story from September 12, 1976. It's a few days now. Amen. Amen. My God, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Amen. Make a vow. I made a vow. I entered into a covenant. Sir. I wrote it. It's been published several times. It's not casual something. Oh God, I reserve you. I wrote wonderful things in it. I wrote by my hand. The handwriting is there. Praise God. And he'll give you rest. And say, and there was no more war. My God. As long as you maintain that covenant, you won't even know that war is still in the world. You won't know, sir. You won't know. Simple thing. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 12 to 15. Simple thing. Verse 19. Simple thing. And there was no more war until King Asa shifted. Just stay on, sir. This thing is beautiful. Abraham stayed on for 100 years. He got, he encountered God at 75. He went home at 175. He was on top in his worship and still worship for 100 years. When did you start now? When did you start that you are counting this? Yes, uh, 22 years ago. I've been doing kingdom advancement. <laughs> you will do it in the many days of your year. In the many days of your year. At 100, you'll be praying for your grandchildren and say, Blessed be God who showed me the pathway of life. Hmm? Don't miss it, oh. It's sweet. He's kept me alive till now. Glory to God. That's what it takes to keep the doors open. Not he opens the door and then you fly away. No. The doors, <laughs> may the doors not be shut again. Please enjoy this thing. And you'll be glad you did. Stand to your feet, everybody. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise.
Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, lift up your two hands and bless the Lord for the light that has come. Because no door of favor shall be shut against you anymore. You will not suffer the affliction of closed doors anymore. Every harassment of the devil against your destiny is over finally. Give him glory, give him praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As anything dropped for you today, you will testify. You shall testify. The light of today will trigger a turnaround in your own life that will never end. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Amen. Very quickly this morning, you are here and you are not born again yet. I'd like to pray with you. Wherever you are this morning, you want to say, Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. I also want to live a commas life and I want to make heaven at the end of my journey. Wherever you may be, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you now. It's your turn to be saved. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you right there. I pray with you around there. Jesus, save my soul. Please stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. Stand to your feet. God bless you. And God bless you. Remain standing, please. Remain standing, please. Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Please stand to your feet. Light, life is very sweet on this side of Jordan. Life is very beautiful on this side of Jordan. And you are going to experience it today in the name of Jesus. Somebody else is standing on wherever you may be, whether in the gallery or on the main floor. Please stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right from here in the name of Jesus. Now, secondly... There are people in this church, in this service this morning, that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. They need to reconnect back to their God and start enjoying the fullness of life all over again. Wherever you are, maybe you are once saved, but at a time something's happened and you there's a disconnect between you and God. You want to reconnect back to God today. Please stand to your feet also. I want to pray with you. At the same time, please stand. God bless you. Jesus, I'm returning back to you today. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are. Please stand to your feet. I'm praying with you at the same time with all the others in the name of Jesus. Now, all of us who are standing, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lift up your right hand, please. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are now forgiven. And I accept you. Now I accept you. As my Lord and my Savior. And thank you Jesus. For saving my soul. Thank you Jesus. For restoring me back to the faith, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for the free gift of eternal life. By your help, I believe I shall make heaven at the end of my journey on earth. Amen. Now keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray for these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you right now with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults. No force from hell shall draw you back from falling Christ. Your beauty begins today. Your color begins today. Receive the grace to live your commerce life. Sin shall no more have power over your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratu Please get seated. Shall we all rise? Let the stewards please come over. Jesus was ever sensitive to the leading of the Father. As we partake of this communion today, your sensitivity goes into next level. 
as God instructs you in your private meditation time, grace will be sent to you to receive it. Receive it right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He always did what pleased the Father. Now, from today, whatever turns God off will not have a hold on your life anymore. Now we are the new our DNA connectivity with Christ today, and no door could be shut against him. So no door shall be shut against you from henceforth. Now, no sickness escapes the power of the blood in this communion. No satanic attack escapes the power of the blood in this communion. Everyone that came in here in any kind of bondage or captivity, as you partake of this flesh and blood of Jesus, whatever could not hold Christ to ransom loses the grip of your life. You are testifying this week. In the name of Jesus. I decree every closed door to anyone here reopened this week. It's done. This is the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Partake of it and be in grace to live like him. Lord, as we partake of this today, we receive grace to be empowered to live like you. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please get seated and take your turn. The weak is declared your weak. Amen. Even today, many here will receive good news. Amen. No one shall lack a testimony of encounter this week. Many will be here next Sunday with tears of joy. Yeah. Many will share their testimony of the covenant hour of prayer. Yeah. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, surely. Yeah. 